Hey guys, welcome back to the Dabbler's Den. Um, this is a continuation of my series on the LiDAR field trips. Uh, and we're probably going to break this, this video into two separate parts. Um, what we're doing in this video is we're going to try to determine whether or not these now vegetated sand dunes were originally windblown sand dunes or if they are in fact um, splash or tsunami sand dunes created from the uh, Carolina Bay forming ice chunks that would have originated from the Saginaw Bay. Um, now, if you, you know, go back, click the link above and uh, go back and watch uh, from the beginning if you need to. Um, if you've been following along, then, then great. I'm just going to kind of get right into it uh, for this one. Uh, so anyways, uh, before we get into that, we need to, to first determine whether or not, uh, or we need to first look at um, windblown sand deposits versus water pushed or tsunami uh, sand deposits. And that's going to be the difference between like a sand dune or a chevron in this case. Um, so let's do that. Let's go ahead. And I, I've went ahead and found a couple places here to, to let us get started. Um, the first place I want to go is uh, Great Dunes National Park. Uh, that's here in the United States. Uh, here we go. And we're just going to kind of scoot over there, take a look at it. And these are classic windblown um, wind deposits. Uh, some of these are in the chevron shape, uh, as you can see here. Um, now, arguably, um, there are some hypotheses out there that this could be created from a uh, from water. Uh, basically, this being a, a huge lake at one time. Uh, but, you know, regardless, this is, you know, very far away from any sea. And uh, you can see here lots of windblown sand um, forming these shapes. Uh, and, and, you know, no doubt that they have been affected by wind over thousands of years. Uh, okay, so let's go ahead and look at, uh, let's head over to Saudi Arabia. Uh, there's a couple really classic examples of parabolic dunes there. Here we go. And again, now we are close to the sea here, uh, but again, we have some really good examples of some parabolic dunes. Uh, here's one right here uh, where you can see the wind is, is coming in. It's coming in from this direction. Um, mounting the sand up, and then as it goes over the, the lip here, it just kind of settles back out, forming this parabolic shape. Um, again, classic example of wind-blown sand deposits. And it's just there, it's a huge area with lots and lots and lots of sand uh, and lots of time to push that sand around. Um, I, I also want to point out some uh, Barkin dunes, uh, and we're going to head over to um, Peru for that. So let's scoot on over there. Google Earth is awesome, by the way. I love this thing. All right, here we go again. Uh, now, uh, this is in Peru, South America, and, uh, you know, classic examples of some Barkin dunes, uh, which are kind of the opposite of parabolic dunes. Uh, basically, the wind is coming in this direction, and uh, as it hits um, the surface here, it kind of blows around the side, leaving the depression on the inside there. Uh, but again, classic, classic wind-blown uh, sand deposits. Um all right, so now let's go ahead and look at some tsunami um, tsunami deposits of sand. And uh, the first one we're going to go to is um, one that I was kind of directed to. Um, this is on the coast of Madagascar. Uh, and recently, not, not too recently, but a little while ago, um, it was determined that these were created by the Burkle Crater uh, in the Indian Ocean, uh, there is a crater there. They think that there was an impact, and it sent all of this waves and and uh, this huge tsunami into this direction. Let me go and back out a little bit, and we'll kind of pinpoint where the Burkle Crater is. Here it is, right here. And so, the, obviously, there's some uh, some impact features there, and just sent out a huge tsunami in all directions. Um, I'm not going to you know focus too much on this coast, uh, but it definitely looks like it may have been hit by a huge wave. But here we have classic examples of, of um, you know, a tsunami chevron being formed where water gets pushed up and all the sand goes up with it. And you can see all of these chevron shapes going all the way up the coast here. Um, and it's, it's, again, it's all the way up the coast. 
um, you know, these, these classic chevrons being created and then notice the shapes, you know, it's, it's, it's not a huge area, but it's, it's a very narrow area of, uh, sand and, uh, deposits being pushed up the shoreline. Uh, huge. I mean, this is, this is a big deal. Uh, now, I have heard about this, uh, but I actually found it on my own. Uh, but I figured, you know, if, if we had this happening here on the on the southwest corner of Madagascar, well, what's going on over here in Africa? And, you know, this probably would have been affected the same. And sure enough, you know, you scroll down into it. And again, you see classic chevrons uh, of, of sand and water just being pushed very far inland. Um, and in this case, I mean, golly, look. If, if we just take our, our measuring tool here uh, and just go from our current coastline, uh, you know, up to the end of these, I mean, we're talking, you know, 15 miles inland. Um, so that's that's a big deal, even farther. Um, so huge, huge deal here with uh, these these tsunami chevrons. And again, these are these have been pretty well proven now. Um, OK, now I'm going to shift gears and uh, head uh, over to Australia. Uh, which would have been could have been caused by the same impact uh, from the Burkle crater. Uh, but let's head over towards Australia, see some chevrons over there. Um, <clears throat> here we go. Okay, <laughs> again, classic examples here. You know, we've got the sand being pushed way inland. Um, all of these chevrons. Uh, being formed uh, from the wind, or I'm sorry, from the water pushing all the sand up into these areas. Again, classic chevron here where water gets pushed up and then drains back out in the same direction uh, all the way up the coast. Matter of fact, if we uh, go to my second spot here in, in Australia, just head up the coast a little bit. And, uh, you know, again, more, you know, classic examples of these chevrons pushing sand and water well inland well inland let's um let me get my measuring tool real quick and measure how far this is from from our current shoreline by the way you know yeah a couple miles inland um so so that's a lot i mean that's that's a lot of water being pushed up uh, i got one more in australia i wanted to look at i found a whole bunch by the way just just scooting around google earth um yeah here you go look at this water coming in this direction and being pushed way way inland um, and again, these classic chevron shapes where the sand gets pushed in and then washed back out. Um, yeah, all, all good examples there. Um, let's head back over to Africa. I want to check the uh, western side of Africa. And this is pretty amazing. Um, you know, but again, here we go. You know, here's classic chevrons, uh, sand being pushed way inland. But notice how narrow it is, but it's being pushed up uh, and uh, all the way up the coast here, um, you know, we see the same, same thing. Uh, yeah, look at this. I mean, that's, this is uh, pretty amazing. Uh, this whole area uh, just being pushed uh, with water and sand being pushed up into those areas and then back out, forming that chevron shape. Uh, and then one more. Um, let's head down to South America. <laughs> and, and here we go again. You know, this is uh, this is a huge one. Let's just use my measuring tool on this one uh, from our current coastline to the end. There, that's eighteen, almost nineteen miles uh, of um, you know tsunami being pushed inland. That's that's and, and and all that sand coming along with it too, and creating those those dunes that we see today. Um, here's another example there. Um, and I even noticed an example a little bit farther south uh, here. Uh, you know, this is pretty impressive. But again, it's that same shape, the same, uh, you know, same formation of, of what created that. So, um, <clears throat> so anyways, again, I, I wanted to look at that. We are going to, uh, in the next part, we're going to take a look back at the LIDAR and uh, we're going to compare and see, you know, this is it. This is what it looks like without the LIDAR on. And uh, we're going to try to determine whether or not these are windblown uh, or are they splash chevrons created from falling chunks of ice that created the Carolina Bay. So we'll, we'll be back with part two.